I might redo that. <laughs> River Rats, it's fall time. The water's cooling off. The days are getting shorter. And it's honestly like my favorite time of year. Fingers crossed we can find some big ugly face who's ready to eat. So let's go. If you're like, man, it sure would be a lot cooler if you would uh, put out some kayak flathead fishing videos. I agree, it would be a lot cooler if I, I did. Um, and the thing is, it's not for lack of trying. Like, Ryan and I have put in some time and the fishing has left a lot to be desired. I don't know the reason. We've had a severe drought for about four years and some harsh winters to coincide with low water. And I don't know if that's impacted the fishery, but I can't think of how it wouldn't. And, or maybe I just suck. Like that's a real possibility too. That's what I'm going with. <laughs> Moral of the story is catching them around home has been immensely difficult. And uh, there's been some nice fish caught, but it's not on video. And they, we've had to work for them. But we're gonna give her another rip tonight. We're going down to a pretty good spot, at least a spot that's treated me real good in the past. And I was here earlier this summer and I didn't catch anything, but I heard a big one eaten. So he should still be there because the water has not, <laughs> the water's actually dropped even more. It was the lowest I'd ever seen it in 10 years and then it dropped more. <laughs> uh, yeah, normally this river flows at like one to 2,000 CFS right now, and we're flowing at 20, 15? 12. 12, 12 up north. It's uh, it's not too far from not even being a river. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Whether this is a video or not, we're gonna have a good time. And that's all that really matters. Unless you're trying to make YouTube fishing videos, then <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that makes things different. It's the little details. Uh, it is funny, before I ever started making YouTube videos, like, if I went fishing and didn't catch anything, I really didn't care. Now the only reason I care is because then I can't put out videos. Maybe that's why fly head fishing speaks to me, because you go fly head fishing a lot, and at least in the upper Midwest, in the area I'm at, you can do everything right and not get them. Um, even when the fishing's better than it has been this year, you can do everything right and not get them. And I accepted that fact. And I was okay with it. Oh, the carp are getting rowdy up there. I do enjoy all the stuff of fall. Like there's some doves flying around. No roosters cackling, but that's an enjoyable sound as well. I'm gonna try to make it through these rapids. There's this log crossing the river too. But there's a channel cat sitting behind that thing. Should have brought my battery for my fish finder. Oh yeah. It's two feet deep. Yep. 1.8. That's a hole. God, you know this river so well. I know it. <laughs> <laughs> this has changed a lot. Yeah. Like there's actually a little bit of depth there. That's kind of neat. It might be a decent brush pile worth fishing one of these days. One bummer part about this spot is there's not much firewood. It's not supposed to be amazingly cold tonight, but it'll be cool enough where a fire would be pretty darn nice. There was something sizable moving right there. Carp? Well, it's like four inches deep. So if he wasn't big enough where his back was sticking out, he probably wasn't that big. Yeah. It's changed. I was here a month ago and the areas that were three and four feet deep are now six inches deep. The core of the hole was like six, seven, deepest part. Now it's three. And it's not that the rivers dropped that much, it's because the river's dropped, it's shifting sand around and filling this hole in because we haven't had any high water to scour it out. It's not good. 3.2? Yeah, that's the deepest. Yeah. He probably just bonked a flathead on the head. <laughs> no, he's been dead for months. Oh, he's been dead for months. <laughs> this is crazy. 
Maybe we'll get lucky. We're here. Fish. <laughs> Might as well fish. Yeah. This looks like a dinky creek, and it's not supposed to be a dinky creek. It's a small to mid-sized river that now looks like a dinky creek. And our creeks are dry. I don't know what to expect. I'm hopeful. But, uh, trying to be aggressively optimistic. <laughs> I also forgot my chest mount, so videography is going to be a little different, but if one bites, I got something set up. So at least you'll get a new sweet angle if one bites. <laughs> the audio won't be as good, so you won't have to listen to me blabber as, as much. It's like you're on the mound trying to talk to your kid, giving him pit pitching instructions. Ryan. All right, buddy. That's 14 <laughs> balls in a row. <laughs> Let's get this together. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to get camp set up and kick back and relax, and hopefully something cool happens. That's something. That is something. Angry something. Yeah. Almost like turtley something. It's not a flathead. Oh, popped it out of his mouth, whatever it was. Or off his foot. Or off his foot. <laughs> well, he's still got guts. He got nibbled on by something. <laughs> I don't know what. I thought it was a turtle, but I'm thinking it was a channel cat or a small flathead or something. I'm getting attacked by moths, so I'm going <laughs> to get a new bait out there and turn the camera off. Yeah, there's been a lot of trips like that this year. It's uh, been tough. It's not that I've given up on kayak fishing. I don't know if I ever will, unless I'm like physically unable to. But I've been spending a lot more time in the boat, mainly because I feel like the boat gives me the most advantages for catching flatheads. And I know, like, flatheads are all, like, I know flatheads are most of your guys' favorites and you subscribe to this channel in large part because you want to see somebody catch flatheads. Unfortunately, not unfortunately, and fortunately, flatheads are my absolute favorite fish. So this, this year has been killing me a little bit. It's just been tough. Like I've spent a lot of time in the boat and a lot of time in this thing without much to show for it, just like the video clips you just watched. And, the reasoning why, I mean, it could be the drought. It's like, because what I've noticed is the first year of drought, I had an excellent season. The next year was a little worse, and the next year was worse. And then this year, yeah, so this is the fourth year of drought. This year's been the worst I've ever seen it. Are they related? Maybe, maybe not. Correlation doesn't necessarily mean causation, but it's hard to imagine that reducing the overall habitat available to a population of fish doesn't impact the species in some way especially for like a super long amount of time and you add that with a couple really cold winters like we had some super cold winters in low water falls that prevent fish from getting down to wintering holes you know it's easy to imagine a 30 pound flathead stuck in a three foot hole with no way out where it gets to negative 30 for overnight lows for a week straight and then they get a foot and a half of ice over the top of three foot of water and they got this much room with no new water with barely any water flowing through to bring in any oxygen it's easy to imagine that fish not making it especially if it's really old or is uh, sick or you know a million different things like nature's a nasty 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 place and, i mean i think of it as not not just conditions but predation when it comes to predation i think of the scariest movie i've ever watched with the biggest nastiest monster chasing you trying to eat you and like that's like a gizzard shad's life you know <laughs> like they're living a scary movie so i don't know man like maybe it's maybe it's the drought maybe it's something else and like i mentioned in in earlier like maybe i just suck but either way, flathead fishing's been tough. I haven't been in the kayak a whole bunch, and I think I already mentioned that, but I've been spending more time in the boat. 
and not just spending more time in the boat, but traveling to new places, places that actually have water. And, you know, there are upsides to it. I've, I've learned a lot. I, I've caught fish that I never would have caught otherwise. And, you know, blue cats are a whole lot of fun. So I've had a lot of fun chasing them around. And I have picked up some nice flatheads. They just haven't been on camera. Like the biggest flathead that I've personally landed this year. Ironically, I was kayaking and I just didn't have a camera because it wasn't a fishing trip. It was a kayaking trip with, with my wife and, and, and all of our friends. So filming wasn't on the priority, but couldn't help but you know bring along some bullheads and some fishing rods and trying to catch a few. Guiding trips, they went well. I mean, we put several flatheads between 35 and just under 50 pounds in the boat. There's just, when I run guide trips, there's no camera running. So I'm happy that I'm putting clients on good fish and I'm happy that they're happy. I just wish I could provide you guys with some videos that have big ugly fish in them because the big ugly fish are my favorite. And I mean, based off of how many people watch the videos, it seems like the big ugly fish are all of your favorites too. And I don't blame you. I mean, they're, they're fish like nothing else out there. They're, they don't look like another catfish. They don't act like another catfish. I mean, a blue cat and a flathead act about as close as a chimpanzee and a blue cat, you know? Like, they're nothing, nothing alike. And they're a challenge. I mean, even in the best of times, years other than this, even the good years, it's not like they just hop, hop in the kayak or hop up on the bank or anything like that. They, they're a challenge. and. You know, when you catch them, that sure is gratifying. And then level up from there when you get to the point where you can catch them on a consistent basis, at least from a fishing perspective, I don't think there's anything more satisfying in this whole world. I'm gonna dive into the, the tournament scene a little bit more and maybe, maybe when I win my first tournament, I guess if I win my first tournament, I'm gonna try my, my damnedest to make it happen. Maybe that'll be a similar feeling, I don't know, but it'd be sweeter if I won a tournament by catching a big flathead, that would be something. But I don't know. I mean, I don't know what to expect. There's a lot of things coming down the, the pipe, a lot of stuff I'm trying to make happen. And, you know, at the, the center of it, it's, it's to make better videos for all of you to enjoy watching. Like, you know, aside from family, making the best possible videos I can is, is my top priority so hopefully all that stuff pans out and it results in more enjoyable stuff for you guys to watch but I felt like this year needed a you know for me to explain what I'm running into what I'm seeing I, I try to tell a story of a of each fishing trip but I don't really dive into what's happening behind the scenes and that's what I've been seeing a lot of time on the water not a lot of flatheads to show for it and what I said earlier, I really meant like, aside from the video video side of it, you know, just being out there is my favorite part. You know, like if I didn't have to catch a fish for a video before I ever made videos, getting skunked didn't bother me. And it's cool what you learn by not catching stuff or anything. You get out there, you explore, you check things out, you, you learn stuff, you, you know, all this, the, the things that go into trips before the trip even starts, like the rigging rods, the scheming, trying to decide where you're going to go, what you're going to do, when you're going to do it, and then getting out there and soaking up all that Mother Nature has to offer. You know, like this is fall, this is my favorite time of year, nice temps, no bugs, beautiful colors on the trees, and cool, crisp air. And I, I absolutely love it. And the fishing really is the, you know, I want to catch fish, obviously, because that means you're successful. And I really, you know, I try really hard to be successful at whatever I do. But the act, the act is the best part. So I just heard a door open. I think the dogs are, are coming. I better get those them under control. But everybody who takes time to watch my videos it, it really does mean a ton i will be back in the kayak some way somehow big water little water some water i'll make some kayak fishing videos and we'll figure something out but thank you for taking the time to watch seriously it's pretty
pretty cool that I get to live the life that I do. And if it wasn't for you guys, it wouldn't be possible. So thanks. Hope you catch a giant.